welcome to another video i am the star man now quick video this one i know i say that quite a lot don't i but anyway we've actually got the lyra meteor shower which is going to happen tomorrow night tuesday the 21st and this is just a little video just to give you some some good settings for your camera now the actual peak of the meteor shower is actually on wednesday morning so tomorrow night on tuesday night into wednesday morning we've probably got from about I would say 11 o'clock at night until maybe 4 o'clock in the morning because after that the sky is going to start to get brighter again because the nights are getting quite short now so I just want to give you some tips really on, on how to see if you can see if you can capture some of these meteors now these lyries are actually a pretty good uh, meteor shower but the only thing is you don't see that many of them I think it's down as about 15 to 20 per hour which isn't a lot and that's considering you can see the whole sky now normally we can only see about what half of the sky at any one time and then we're stuck at home as well I'm stuck here in the garden so I'm gonna have to do my photographs from here I can't go to somewhere really dark so hopefully we will see some nice bright lyrid meteors because it does give off some really nice fireballs it's just that they can be very few and far between I have seen some nice bright fireballs in the past I'll just show you one on the screen now that I captured a few years ago this was probably about um, 10 miles away from home not that far away and I actually captured the vapor trail on this as well in, in the uh, frame now you can actually see the bright star Vega in that picture because the Lyrids come from the constellation of Lyra of which Vega is one of the, the brightest stars in the whole sky Vega is the brightest star in the small constellation of Lyra so yeah so that's it um, so Tuesday night into Wednesday morning and if you miss this one the settings that I'm going to show you now, some very quick settings just to give you an idea of how to capture these meteors, will apply to other meteor showers that we'll get through the year. So they'll apply to the Perseids, which come in August, and they'll also apply to the Geminids, which we get later on in uh, December. So I'm just going to show you now through the settings on my camera that I would have set up to photograph Lyrids from home. Right, okay, so firstly I've got my widest lens on, which happens to be at the moment the 24 to 70 millimeter lens. Unfortunately, my 14 to 24 millimeter lens, my beloved 14 to 24 f2.8, uh, got written off. So I've got 24 millimeters here, but going to the widest uh, setting I can to give us the best chance of catching most of this guy. And also, don't forget to focus on infinity. I've got some videos on focusing. So I'm focused on infinity there, so make sure you're on infinity. So that's the lens I've got set up now. So let's have a look at the actual settings. Right, okay, so if you saw my video on star trails, um, you'll know that I've set the camera up for 30 second exposures, and I think this, this, the aperture was f4, and that's a simple star trail. And what you want to do is basically set your camera up the same way, but you want to try and, if you can, if you've got a faster lens, say one that goes down to f2.8, use that. Um, I'm lucky that this one does go down to f2.8 but also you want to increase the sensitivity so you want to increase the ISO because ISO 100 or I should I say ISO 200 which I had for the star trails isn't going to be enough I don't think to capture some of these uh, meteors so what we need to do is we need to boost it up to say 800 if you've got an f2.8 lens or maybe go up to 1600 if you if you if you only have say one a lens that goes down to f4 or something like that or you could you could you know you could twiddle around with this if you want um so yeah so we really need to have the sensitivity turned up because the lyrid meteors if you want to try and capture as many as you can you're not going to capture them if you're using a um a low iso say 200 unless you happen to get a really bright fireball so really generally we want to be on about 800 but as well, we need to dial down the shutter speed as well because 30 seconds is going to be too long and you're going to get uh, too much sky glow. So we're going to need to dial the shutter speed down to, I would say, I don't know, about 10 seconds or maybe even less. So you're going to take quite a lot of photographs. Um, let's say if we say 10 seconds, you're going to take six photographs per minute. Um, so there's going to be quite a lot of photographs there. So make sure that you set to JPEG only. Do not use RAW because you're gonna fill your hard drive up and you'll be able to work a lot quicker if you're just shooting JPEG. So yeah, let's say F2.8, ISO 800, 
and shoot for 10 seconds and use one of these things which I'm, I'm sure you've seen me use basically you have your, your, your shutter speed all set up there and then all you have to do is just press this thing here just lock it down and that's it your camera oh as well make sure you've got your frame advance set to um, continuous as well so that will just keep taking pictures and hopefully you might catch some of these lyrids yeah so that's it really short and sweet um, hope i've given you some tips there just to give you a chance um, i know it's a bit of a quick one so anyway at the same time as well if you don't happen to see any lyrids if you're not lucky get out and look anyway because we've got some brilliant weather this week in the uk um certainly and it's going to be clear i think it's going to be 100 percent clear so have a look around and see what you can see in the sky if you look towards the south early on you'll see leo the constellation of leo um <clears throat> orion's moving out of the way you'll probably notice orion we've got starlink satellites going across the sky not great really yes you can look at them and they're interesting and all that sort of thing but uh, they're not really very good for astronomy because when they start putting more of these satellites up they're going to be all over the sky and they're going to mess all our sky up so anyway um i hope i've given you a bit of inspiration to uh, have a go at capturing some of these meteors or at least just to see them try not to point your camera towards the radiant if you can the radiant is going to be in the east try to point your camera sort of 45 degrees away or even 90 degrees away and that way you'll get longer trails because if you point towards the radiant the meteors are going to be coming straight towards you so they'll get the trails will be fairly short so so thanks for watching and i'll see you next time